again. This is number four, fun in the studio. And I took the liberty again of, uh, of painting the checkerboards and uh, again using my Robert Burridge um, color wheel. Uh, this one is going to be a middle green <coughs> as, a, as the um, oh, dominant color and then the complementary color is the compost rose and then marigold and Christura blue. So I'm going to um, go ahead and lay in some color here. Do the bottom here. I find my mirror gold here. There it is. And I have other colors as well. I don't always, like I said, um, use that exactly, but I keep close to it because I want to make sure that I have um, my colors going together. So again, I'm going to lay some color in here, and I've just got little bits of of um, uh, like bright colors in here just to add a little punch. And if it gets too loud, I just tone it down a little bit in spots, that's all. I don't have to um, have the whole thing so loud that it just screams color because you need to have areas of rest where you um, can just have, your eye can just not be so overtaken with all the bold color. Because sometimes that's just too much for our, us to take. So you have a balance of very intense color and some low key color. I like actually adding black and white, and we'll do that later on when I get. Um, to do other videos and we have uh, more detail. I actually like to use a lot of black and white too in a lot of my work. So, And on some of my work I start with a black gesso canvas and I work from black gesso uh, and I go from dark to light. Now I've got um, compost blue started here but I'm going to come back I'm going to lay just a little bit of this blue in here, and I'm going to come back with a dark blue, and maybe some purples and things like that. So I'm just adding a wash, so to speak. Being careful to keep my shape, I don't want to get rid of that. So to pick up lots of water, I just take my rag and dab it right here. I might have my rag right down here. And I just grab the color. shadow in there. I love this color because you can get some nice shadows. It's, it can be transparent. in here. It's a nice gray. I'll come back in and warm it up. But I just want to have a darker value in here for now. I'll let that dry. And what's fun about acrylics, it dries pretty fast. Unless you're using Golden's Open Acrylics, that um, they stay wet for a longer period. So it's real nice. You can work with them. Where is my other flat brush here? And if you can't find a flat brush, you just use your fingers. 
So I'm going to come in here with some pinks. And use my fingers. I don't worry about the lines because I have the shape right now. And I can come back and clean it up. later, which I will anyways. I love acrylic because it gets so gooey sometimes. And if it gets too dry, I just add more water. And it's fun to see after you paint with your fingers, when it dries, I'll let it sit and then I come back and then I notice some really fun things that have taken place. to just play, see what happens. What happens if I do this? What happens if I do that? I'm not worried about having it perfect again, like I said before. adding touches of color, um, little bits here and there, like this green, and see what happens when it dries. I'm letting the uh, um, top dry, and I will come back to that later. It's fun. Add touches of color here and there. My first one was um, pretty tight, and as by the time you get down to the fourth and on and on it goes, you just loosen up more and more. So it's a lot um, more fun. Sometimes too, I'll just let this sit overnight or let it sit for a couple of days and then I come back to it and see what needs to be changed because there's always something that needs to be changed. And if it doesn't, then that means it's done. If I can't add anything more to it or change it at all, I just say, well, it looks like it's done. So for now, I'll just leave that, and then I'll come back for a um, little more, um, retouch it up a little bit more, and, and tighten it up a little bit.